you get your views from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe We all watched in horror 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder how they fell so fast? Well, maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask. Don't you think it's strange There were no fighter jets Did someone give the order Not to intercept And if they really scrambled Then why'd they fly so slow Maybe there's an answer That we don't want to know And where was our president, George W. That fool? Who is still to be <laughs> okay, you're going to have to take out that CG. Welcome to another episode of 9-11 was an inside job. I see you over there. You're going to have to take that CG out from in front of me. No, it's not. But anyway, uh, I... <laughs> Just return it to a good picture where I'm in front. There we go. Congra hey, all right. Now you can see me. Hi, I'm Bill Olson. I'm your host for 9-11 was an inside job. And uh, back on the 20th of February, the, or, I got an email and a call into the station telling me to watch KBU the next morning on the 21st. That was my birthday, and uh, that's why I'm 251 Omega, February 1951. But anyway... The point is, uh, I did watch that show. It was with Barbara Ellis and Barry Ball from the uh, PDX 9-11 Alliance were uh, talking about their effort to open up a new investigation. And uh, I just want to welcome any KBU viewers. During that show, somebody called in and said, hey, did you know that there was a cable access show on Channel 11 here in Portland? In about a 15-second spot. That couldn't work out better, you know? So... Uh, I just want to welcome all the KBU, KBU viewers. It's KBU is a uh, non-profit, listener-supported uh, radio, local radio. Uh, <laughs> what am I trying to say? Anyway, support KBU with your donations. It's it's worthwhile. And uh, today we're going to talk about a few things right off the bat. Uh, I guess I want to go to talk about the. Uh, we're about to get back on the uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force. Sam Adams is about to make us uh, join up again, or at least considering it. They put off the decision. Let's see no, CG number five. Um, and I'll go ahead and read part of this article here, if I can find it. But, uh, okay, we'll put, up, put up CG number five. Um, I was going to suggest that everybody, you know, get on the telephone and start calling Sam Adams and say, hey, we don't need to be on the Joint Terrorism Task Force because the whole thing is based on a false premise. The idea that 9-11 was an inside job uh, negates the whole idea that we're being attacked by terrorists. The terrorists that we're being attacked by are, unfortunately, some of them are in our own government. Um, this story was carried on KPTV, and uh, also if you'd switch to CG number six, there's an article from the LATimes.com that, uh, I'll, I'll read this one about reporting from Portland, Oregon, 
So this is a city that has staked out its independence from the federal government loudly and often. Staffers of the then President George H.W. Bush nicknamed Portland Little Beirut for the violent protests that greeted him whenever he made an appearance there here. Right on. Well, I don't, I don't go along with the violent part of it, but uh, definitely those, you know, people should be speaking out whenever a war criminal comes to Portland, whether it's George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, or whether it's Obama. And by the way, I'd like to point out that before the election, I said, you know, I would like to see Obama elected so that people will get over this idea that black and white makes a difference at that level. You know, at that level, you're already accepted or you're rejected by the power structure. And if you're accepted, you're going to toe the line. And you've seen people calling Obama uh, a liberal. Well, that offends liberals everywhere because Obama is about as unliberal as you can get. Are any of the policies George Bush had liberal? How about torture? How about Guantanamo? How about imprisonment without having any charges? How about being denied a lawyer? How about wiretapping without a warrant? You know, are any of those things liberal? And so stop calling Obama liberal, please. Um, now, here's something. The, you know, the Department of Homeland Security has set up all this nonsense with the TSA uh, x-rays and whatnot when you go to the airport. And uh, every once in a while, something good pops up. First of all, in Texas right now, they're trying to make a law that will ban all of the TSA scanners from airports. You know, it's already unconstitutional or... You know, it hasn't been declared unconstitutional, but like these folks say, it, may, it gives us a good tool until it's declared unconstitutional. They already know it's unconstitutional, but it gives them a good tool for a year or more while we push it through the courts. Well, here's a great one, uh, and this is CG number seven. Go ahead and put this one up. Uh, Alaska lawmaker returns home after refusing search. Oh, it's great. Determined to avoid a pat-down search to board her flight home, an Alaska state lawmaker took an unusual route, a roundabout four-day detour via a rental car, a small plane, taxi cab, and a ferry. Uh, Representative Sharon Cisna's land, air, and sea journey ended Thursday when the ferry arrived in Auk Bay outside of Juneau. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Where she was met by a small group of well-wishers and bouquet of yellow flowers. She said, travelers are accidentally being abused by the government. I don't think it's so accidental. It says, and she vowed to fight for changes in how the Transportation and Security Administration deals with screening passengers, especially those with special health issues. Anyway, uh, things are really coming down the pike uh, in our favor. All around the world, people are beginning to wake up to the idea that, you know, this is... These are not unrelated incidents. 9-11 uh, was the beginning recently of the big push to install this new world government, it looks like. Uh, it certainly was a big push to get, you know, all kinds of wealth transferred from the poor to the rich. And they've succeeded in that, as you can well see. But do you think that any of these protests overseas are just a coincidence? Do you think it's a coincidence they're all at once? Do you think it's a coincidence that we're having protests in Wisconsin? You know, things are supposed to be on, this, on this, the schedule that's being played out. We're supposed to have more and more protests and possibly food riots, and then we're supposed to beg for some sort of new world government to save us. And the, they're scheduling the dollar to be, you know, completely trashed and replaced by 2011. I mean, 12. And I don't know if that's the beginning of 12 or the end of 12, but either way, uh, we'll be able to see that. You know, I have no idea. I'm along for the ride. I don't make these things up. I don't have any reason to enjoy thinking that these things are real. But, you know, all of the folks that used to be called conspiracy nuts, it, it's turning out that they're vindicated now because the powers that be have gone so far with their plans, all the basics are laid, and uh, 
it turns out they don't have to hide anymore. And that's what more and more they're coming out. For instance, chemtrails. I was a firm disbeliever in chemtrails. I didn't believe that anybody would be systematically spraying chemicals. Well, first of all, I, I saw Alex Jones's show where he's ranting and raving. And that wasn't, you know, necessarily a convincing thing, but he pointed out where you could read the patent on the chemtrail spraying. Well, there you go. Now you're getting into something that's concrete. I went and looked up the patent, and sure enough, it's a, a weather modification scheme. And we've been doing weather modification for years, especially in war theaters. Uh, Vietnam was a really good example of that. We brought about monsoon weather during the dry spell and completely wiped out the roads, uh, which were all mud. We, we, there's no reason to suspect that we haven't continued doing that. But now, They've just come out with a new article uh, where the government not only admits a 16-year chemtrail uh, program, they admit it right out in the open, but they say perhaps it's what it's the key, you know, what do they call it? Terraforming is the key to saving us from global warming. So anyway, my point here is what you used to think was a conspiracy theory is now fact. And it turns out that these so-called nutcases are no more than concerned citizens who hear something that should not be, and they're outraged by it, and we start talking about it, and pretty soon somebody tries to discredit you. Uh, the more they try to discredit you, the more they, they, they ignore you or even try to oppose you, the better job you're apparently doing. Now, I pointed out that Jesse Ventura... Uh, had his FEMA camp show erased, re, you know, from people's DVRs by the government. How about that? Uh, that doesn't that bother you? That somebody would be remote erasing something you recorded on your digital video recorder at home? This is really happening. Well, um, to welcome some of the, the new 9-11 visitors, I don't know what sort of uh, impression you got about the 9-11 groups by watching Barbara and Barry, but uh, I have a fundamental difference with their approach to the situation, and that is I don't think you have to f fully uh, write down every possible scenario that could have been responsible and then individually invest investigate the possibility of each scenario. That's not how you do it in criminal work. That's not how you do it anywhere else, so I don't know why we should be doing it here. It's interesting to note how many different ideas people have to explain it, but instead of talking about, you know, somebody's idea about what happened, there are things that we can talk about that are right in front of your face that you cannot deny, and from that point of view, you can go out right from there to demanding a new investigation without knowing why it was that way or how it happened or who did it. You don't have to know any of that. And you don't even have to know, you know, the slightest bit of what they did. You just have to show that the government's story is wrong. And one way that we can do that right now, we're going to go show a, a video. It's a David Chandler video. Uh, I've shown it before. David Chandler has a new um, DVD out called 9-11 Analysis with David Chandler. He's a high school physics professor who actually attended the, the NIST public hearing on their preliminary draft of the, of the Building 7 uh, collapse, and he forced them to admit that there was a period of free fall, 2.5 seconds, which, you know, the implication of that is that gravity wasn't used. None of the falling energy from the building was used to remove the lower structure. Some other energy had to be present to do that. And then you start looking at the David Chandler videos. And the one I'm going to show right now is called uh, the, the South Tower, Smoking Guns and Follow-Up. And 